Hello there everybody, Sam Strange here and welcome back to the railway, lovely to have you back as always and today yet another locomotive review for you and today it's this, this is the Midland Compound by Hornby in the railroad range as you can see this is the railroad loco now I bought this one just before Christmas and it was actually part of Hornby's Christmas advent calendar where for one day only you could buy this for £45 so I thought yeah alright when I saw that I thought yeah I'll have a look at that for £45 it's definitely worth having a look isn't it so I clicked on it and uh, I noticed that it was in the black uh, which is different to the one I've already got the one I've already got is red and I saw that it had a different running number to my red one so that was good and I also noticed that it had a different tender I think this is the Fowler tender and my red one didn't have that so I thought for £45 I'm going to treat myself because it was Christmas I just went for it so yes this is the lovely Midland compound in black and I'm really glad I went for it you know if you're someone who just wants to enjoy a locomotive without worrying about breaking it or without spending loads and loads of money these are absolutely perfect okay let's look at the end of the box then this is number R3276 440 LMS compound with foul attender so yes it does have the foul attender which is a nice touch because I think that represents the different tenders which were fitted to these things in real life anyway nothing on the back of the box of course they don't tend to do that with railroad locos so let's get this one out and see what it's like shall we slip this out and if I can just grab the there we go I got it <laughs> Alright, let's have a quick look at the instructions, and yes, I have shown you these loads of times, so I'm just going to show you very, very quickly. This is for the Compound, County, Hunt and Schools class, so essentially all of the 440 railroad models. And yet, yeah, very simple, just shows you how to oil, how to remove the tender body, because the DCC decoder, if you want to fit one, will go inside the tender. Okay, so that is that, no more to say on that, let's get this one out. So I'll lift this front piece up, there we go, and I'll pull the plastic back for you. And you can see that this one is running number 1072. And it does have a detail pack. And as you might expect, it is quite uh, basic. It is just a pair of vacuum pipes there, which if you want to, you can take out of that little plastic uh, thing and stick them onto the loco. And uh, it just adds that little bit more detail if you wanted it. Anyway, let's get this out. And this is in that piece of plastic, which is great, not only because it's fun to play with, but because you can just grab hold of it and with a bit of gentle force you can just get this to come out, there we go and if I grab this without damaging it, I can show it to you alright here it is, so there it is, yes number 1072 with the Fowler Tender and I do love this pristine LMS black, I think it's fantastic ok well more on this loco in just a second then, but for now here's a little history on the class, here we go so these were also known as the Midland Railway 1000 class and these locomotives started life in 1902 when just five of the three cylinder compound locomotives were produced by Samuel Johnson for passenger work. Richard Dealey further developed these locomotives before they were eventually completely rebuilt by Henry Fowler. The class were also very successful and when the LMS was formed the class was chosen to serve as the standard LMS passenger express locomotive. 45 of the 1000 class were built in total, followed by 195 LMS compound locomotives, which were essentially identical, giving about 240 of these in total, most of which survived into the BR era. Sadly though, only one was preserved, and that was number 1000, which I've got, and I will show you that one later. But yes, so the rest were scrapped unfortunately, but anyway, on with the review, here we go. So there she is then, where you can see her, looking very smart indeed. And I suppose you would think, if they're able to sell this for £45, it's not going to have an awful lot of detail. And in many ways that's true, it really doesn't have a lot of detail. But in my opinion, for £45, that is fantastic, fantastic value for money. And yes, true, that was a sale price, but if you look on Hatton's or Rails of Sheffield or even eBay, you can find it for not much more than that. You can find it for, you know, £50, £55 or whatever, and I think that is a fantastic price. But yes, not a great deal of detail, so I'm going to keep this section quite short, so let's have a look. Obviously it is just in the plain LMS black, but you do have the painted running number on the side there, 1072, which looks to be nicely applied. And also on the front of the smoke box, you also have the running number painted in white there. The buffer beam, of course, is also painted in red, and it is quite nicely riveted, actually, but it doesn't have sprung buffers, which is a bit of a shame, but, uh, you know, it's a very, very budget model, so I suppose that's what you expect. Separately fitted parts are quite minimal. I've decided to show you this side of the model because you have 
The separately fitted, I believe, reverser rod, which is just plastic. It's a shame that isn't metal, but you know, again, budget model. And then you've got this assembly on the side, just behind the smoke box, as you can see there. And I believe that's separately fitted as well. And of course, you've got the handrail there, which is a nice touch too. Now, the safety valves up on top are plastic, and I believe they're part of the molding, but you do have the separately fitted metal whistle over there, which is very nice too. On top of the cab you have quite a bit of riveting and I think that is one of the most detailed parts of the model. And around the front of the cab you can see just there you do have glazed windows actually which is a nice touch. Though sadly inside the cab there isn't any painting unlike the schools class railroad model. Um, so that's a shame but again not too bad. So the locomotive is simple. I wouldn't go as far as to say it's a toy because I really do enjoy uh, running this and it's just one of those locos you can enjoy. You know you don't have to worry about them. Okay, on with the tender then, and this is the uh, Fowler tender, as I said, and it's actually the same tender used with the Patriot, the Hornby Patriot. Now, I think I understand why Hornby have done this, because if they can use the same tender as the Patriot, then that's one less tender that they've got to produce simultaneously, so it cuts back costs. And that's fine, because it is a good tender, but I would say there's one slight problem with it. As you can see by the tender, look at all those rivets, it's a massively, massively well detailed tender and the Railroad Patriot was a massively detailed locomotive. But when you pair this highly detailed tender with this low detailed locomotive, it sort of looks like it doesn't match because obviously the loco doesn't have many rivets on it at all. So yeah, maybe that's a bit of a he's up himself <laughs> remark. But if you are a serious modeler and that's something that would worry you, it's worth bearing in mind. But it is a good quality tender, I must say, and I think it's probably better than the one it replaced. As you can see, the LMS, um, I suppose it's the logo, isn't it, on the side, the lettering. Very nicely applied, as you'd expect. And as I say, lots of riveted detail on there. Up on the top, you do have some uh, quite chunky looking coal. I mean, it does the job, and I suppose if you wanted to, you could cut that out and uh, try and replace it. But it does have that uh, sort of coal guard around it, which is quite unusual, quite characteristic of this tender, I suppose. And I assume that keeps the coal in, in real life, stops it spilling out and such. And finally, around the back of the tender, lots more moulded detail. Obviously, it is a, a highly detailed tender. And uh, yes, I think the tender might be the best part of this. So there you go, that's just a quick overview of the various details. The loco isn't bad, but the tender is noticeably much better. But now then, let's move on to the performance, and we'll see how she runs, shall we? Let's give it a try. Okay, so there she is then, number 1072, on the track, ready to be tested. And she's about to be coupling up to, I believe these are Stania coaches, aren't they? Five of those, so hopefully you'll enjoy that. Then on the middle line we have the famous 1000 locomotive, so it's the same model but in red. And as you can see this livery is a lot more sophisticated, and this one got uh, quite a high detail score actually. And she's got some of the larger LMS coaches, which should look nice with her. And then on the inner line I have the old, original Hornby Midland compound, which is the tender driven one, which has my uh, ring-filled motor improvement. And I think that one is even better again, because it's got that lovely dark red rich maroon livery. And she's got some blood and custard coaches, so again, hopefully that should be nice. And elsewhere on the layout there are six other railroad locomotives for you to spot, except one of them isn't a railroad loco, so see if you can figure out which one that is. Anyway, let's talk about performance. Now, first of all, the motor in this seems to be pretty good. I do like the motor in this. But there are a couple of serious performance issues with this. First of all, obviously the traction tyre. I don't like traction tyres, so I will always mention that. But the weight on this really does seem to affect it, mostly in the tender. Now when I get this tested, you will notice that only the middle tender wheels go round because there's such, you know, there's such little weight in the tender. And actually it's that bad on this one that it starts to affect the pickups because you haven't got these wheels touching the ground sometimes. And look, the tender even rocks backwards and forwards on that middle axle, which is not great, you know, that isn't good at all but a little bit more weight would fix that and you know I do feel sorry for any kids that get bought this and um, that will suffer because of this because you know if they're running it on carpet you've only got one set of pickups on the tender that are actually doing anything and as soon as they get fluffed up it's not going to work but anyway let's try this um, I have had this cut out a little bit um, because of those tender pickups not being able to pick up because they're not touching the track but let's see how it goes so a bit of slow speed then Again, as I say, the motor is great in this. There you go, that's a good slow speed, isn't it? Certainly not bad at all. And in reverse. There you have it. So yes, no complaints there with the slow speed. I mean, that is very, very good indeed. 
<laughs> that was a good rhyme as well. Okay, speed her up a bit then. Let's couple to those coaches then. There we go, keep going. There we go. Okay, well, that sounded like a good successful coupling, so I guess we will find out. Forward she comes. There we go, lovely. She looks the part, that's absolutely true. Okay, let's get the first of the maroon ones running then. Here she goes. Tiny bit of wheel slip I noticed there, but not too bad. And then my modified tender driven version. Here she goes. Okay, and enjoy the running session as always. And now for my ratings on the Black Midland compound then. First of all, detail 6 out of 10. Unfortunately, there is a lot less painted detail than on the red version, so quite a lowish score there. Performance, 7 out of 10. As I've said, it is much too light, to the point where it sort of runs a little bit erratically, so you do need some more weight in there if you want it to run properly. Character, 7 out of 10. As I say, it isn't quite as good as the red version, because it just has less detail, so I think that does affect the character of the logo. Build quality though, 10 out of 10, can't fault it, it seems to be very sturdily built and I've not managed to break it yet, so that's very good. And of course value for £45, absolutely top notch value, can't beat it. So that gives us overall 7.82 out of 10. And if I put that into the ranking, that puts her at 9th between the 8F and Gordon. So you can see that they're all running very nicely in fact, and uh, do let me know what you thought of my ratings, because, I mean, it's important that you guys agree, otherwise I need to change it and be a bit less harsh, but yeah, I do want to be harsh, because then if something fantastic comes along, I can always make the score reflect it. There's the maroon version, that's the loco driven version. And that one is, I don't know, I don't know if it's the better of them, it's certainly the better detailed. But I do like the Fowler Tender, I must admit, but in this case it doesn't run all that great. It's sort of balanced on the middle axle and it rocks back and forth. Not good. But, uh, you know, it's a design flaw, it's just something that needs correcting, I suppose. But it runs okay as you can see, if you're willing to keep the wheels clean it's not an issue at all really. But it's something you should bear in mind. So let me know which is your favourite of the two liveries anyway. We've got the, well in fact you can go with the three liveries if you like. A lot of people prefer the old version with that uh, lovely rich dark red maroon livery so let me know there are the three to choose from Alright then everybody, well that should just about do it for this review, I do hope you've enjoyed it, and of course if you did enjoy it, or even if you didn't, please don't forget to leave me a like, or even a comment, because I do love it when you guys get in touch, 
And also, if you'd like to, please feel free to check out the Facebook and the Twitter pages. And you can find those at facebook.com forward slash samstrains or twitter.com forward slash samstrains. And of course, it would be lovely to see you on there, as always. Also, if you'd like to have your names put up on the Wall of Fame, uh, please do that. You can send in your artwork, photos, or anything you like, really, to samstrains at outlook.com, and I'll print those out and put them up for you. But for now, folks, thank you very much for watching once again, and I will see you all very soon. Cheers, everybody.